is through our electronic batch record keeping because what it does is helps QA and operations teams quickly compile batch reports for Health Canada during an audit or for you to manage your internal quality assurance, quality control processes. So we've had the privilege of working with some amazing producers in the space right now, micro cultivators like Habitat Craft, Parkland Flower and Fotis, also known as Gnome Star, as well as the larger producers like Tantalus Labs, uh, Decibel and their rec brand Quest, Rubicon Organics, and up to top publicly traded companies like Pure Sun Farms. So for today, what we're going to do is we wanted to kick off this session with a brief look at the evolution of software in the cannabis market. Don't worry, you know, this industry is really new, so it's not going to be a painfully long history lesson. But we really want to understand, you know, why it's important. Um, regulations have changed significantly since 2014, and the technology that was developed for ACMPR regulations is still largely being used today, despite the fact that the industry has evolved rapidly year over year. Producers are looking for modern software tools to keep their facilities compliant and competitive in the market. So what we're going to do in this chart here, we're going to walk through the evolution of software as part of a producer's tech stack. At the bottom, I'm also going to contrast the legalization framework against the industry competitive pressures producers were experiencing at the time, going from low pressure over to high competitive pressure. So the industry starts in 2013. Uh, the licensed producer system effectively came about when the MMPR regulations were enacted. In this framework, doctors were allowed to prescribe medical cannabis to their patients, which was then purchased through a commercial grower that was licensed by Health Canada. LPs needed to track their inventory and report it to Health Canada so that the regulars were confident LPs weren't you know, double dipping the chip, i.e. sending pr production to, sending product to registered patients and then out the back door at the same time. Back then, there was no bespoke software readily available to help producers keep track of their cannabis inventory. Operations were managed on pen and paper or using Excel. There was a relatively low number of MMPR growers and a large demand for products from patients. So there's relatively low, com low competitive pressures between producers. From 2014 to 2018, we saw the rise of the ACMPR and really the evolution of seed to sales software. And during this period, medical sales drove the evolution of software for the cannabis market. And platforms developed during this time, like the Air Meds and the Amples of the world, were built for ACMPR and really cannabis 1.0. Seed to sales solutions can handle plant and batch inventory movement, work orders, and patient management. However, any of the associated quality control records need to be logged in a separate system, which is usually pen and paper. Uh, in this presentation and throughout the demo, when we talk about quality control records, we are referring to Health Canada GPP documents like sanitization, destruction, plant inspections, equipment calibrations, and so on. So for producers using seed to sale, the cost of their regulatory program as a function of their operating costs were dramatically increasing. Having multiple disjointed software systems meant that producers were spending significant time and money to combine all of their production data into master batch records for batch release. And having this information trapped on pen and paper prevented producers from analyzing any costing information or you know, really understanding the current quality process the batch was in. So the mix of seed to sale and pen and paper made the cost of compliance for producers extremely high, but it really didn't matter so much at the time because there was only 70 producers or so serving the entire Canadian market. And because those 70 producers were able to have a significant market share, they could keep their revenue growing. So in 2018, we saw the rise of other types of software enter into the cannabis space, most notably enterprise resource planning software and quality management software, QMS. Producers evaluated ERPs to plug some of the gaps, specifically cost accounting left by their traditional seed to sale platforms. ERPs are used by organizations to manage the day-to-day -day business activities like finance and supply chain operations. The major issue we've heard from producers who've deployed ERPs is that they can take upwards of months to implement 
and are really not flexible for daily cannabis production. ERPs don't let staff record the real-time production data like labor tracking or IPM pest pressures on the production floor, forcing producers to continue to capture this information on pen and paper. There we go. Um, other entrants like QMS are great for corrective action planning and deviation reporting, but it doesn't solve the intense labor costs associated with document compilation and inventory reconciliation during batch manufacturing. Any inventory transactions need to be manually inputted after they occur. So really, you know, at the end of the day, producers are spending a lot of time and money implementing disconnected software systems to manage the different departments in their facility. However, none of these softwares actually drive down operating costs because they don't automate the core operating processes required for cannabis production, namely inventory tracking and record keeping. So enter 2020. The current cannabis landscape is extremely competitive. You know, there's over 500 producers across the country and each company is bringing a variety of products to market. So monthly CTS and CRA reporting coupled with the increasing regulatory requirements for each production batch mean that compliance is a huge operational cost for today's producer. And the only way to increase your revenue is to decrease your operating costs. And that can be done through automation. So, you know, really the majority of producers don't require all the aspects of an ERP and seed to sale and pen and paper require excessive manual work, manual work to be operational. So the industry needed modern software and looked towards other industries to see what they were using. Manufacturing software emerged and really helps producers track and document the transformation of plant and biomass into their finished goods. So producers using an MES to operate their facility are more competitive because they can decrease their operational compliance costs per individual batch. Using an MES, Quality control records are filled out in real time on the production floor, digitized and automatically filed into master batch records for producers, saving time and money. Comprehensive inventory reporting allows producers to spend significantly less time on their monthly CTS and CRA reporting and really lets the team focus their efforts on more high value tasks like optimizing their QA process, which shortens product release times, and focuses on new product innovation. So earlier we spoke to Vinoda Chetty, the QA manager at Tantalus Labs about manufacturing software and how it was used at Tantalus Labs. So this is what she had to say. So Vinoda, for those of us who don't know, why don't you tell us a little bit about Tantalus Labs? Um, thank you so much for having me here, Liam. Uh, Tantris Labs is a fully licensed cannabis producer based out of beautiful Maple Ridge in British Columbia. And uh, we have a grow space of about 75,000 square foot for a greenhouse. And um, our principles are based on sustainable cannabis production, as well as producing highly consistent quality products. So um, yeah, we have uh, several processes going on in our facility. We have our cultivation, drying, trimming, packaging, all of it. It's a full operation there. Um, so when we first met you, how was your team managing your QA program? Like, what kind of tools were you using and how was it working out? Um, so our QA program and actually our operations program as well was mainly uh, using tools such as um, you know Google Docs or Google Sheets and sometimes even Asana, which is actually a project management tool. But we were just using it for our you know production batch records, and um, it, we always did focus on you know digital using digital tools. Uh, we tried to stay a bit away from paper documents, and we would just do. Uh, paper documents for specific like, inspections. But um, other than that, yeah, that's how we were doing all our, <laughs> managing all our QA records. And yeah, it was slightly burdensome at that point, and for sure not scalable. 
when you were looking for a new solution, what did you want that software to do? And uh, what were some of the options that you found available to you? Um, so what we were specifically looking for were was one major w w point was um, that it be cannabis specific, you know, uh, and um, it, it, we wanted something that helped uh, address all our processes, uh, you know, from cultivation, drying, trimming, and then also provide sort of like integrate the records that are associated with each of these processes uh, in order for us to be compliant with Health uh, Canada regulations. And, uh, you know, in QA land, it's important that um, we have this cohesiveness when it comes to records. Uh, we need to be able to understand the life history of these batch batches. Each batch has to have sanitization records, for example, a nutrient records. Um, uh, you know, drying where where you know where it was located at a certain time. Destruction records. So we wanted a software that brings all of these records together, provide like a summary to us, and um, and yeah, and that's that's what we were looking for. And at that time, the tools, you know, with my uh, with with Google Docs and Sheets, they were sort of uh, spread out. Uh, it was the, the all the data wasn't integrated, wasn't uh, connected. There was it was it was very hard to manage that. And um, we did sort of try to develop something in house as well. But of course, that is uh, not very cost effective. Uh, it didn't prove to be cost effective for us. And it's not just about developing the software. It's also about testing it. And um, and, and it, it just it was a lot. It was time consuming. So we didn't have many options uh, at, at the time that I joined, especially when we were more of a startup. And we also wanted something that was um, scalable. You know, when, when I started off, we, we had a very few batches. And now we've gone on to, we're selling dry flower pre-rolls. We're getting into cannabis 2.0 products. So we need something that's scalable, is able to take that much data and put it all together. Mm -hmm. And that's a great point. So not only scalable on your existing operations, but as you want to bring in more SKUs, and all of the associated quality records with those. So around this time, I guess, is really when our partnership uh, started to take off. And you know, for our, for our team, it was an absolute joy and privilege to work closely with the Tantalus team to design what would effectively become the manufacturing execution software that you would be using at the at the facility. And really, you know, the, the goal of working together was helping to provide a platform that would manage your inventory, your regular, your record keeping processes, and ultimately allow each team member to excel and really do their jobs effectively. Um, so, you know, looking back and sort of where the team is today, how is implementing a MES grown your QA program? Oh, um, it has been super, super helpful. Uh, really just the, the fact that we can integrate the quality assurance practices with in, uh, operations practices, you know, that itself uh, on its own is is an important aspect that we required in any manufacturing facility for that matter. And, and then this software is then specific for cannabis, which is a boon. And um, especially in QA land, it's important to sort of, we're, we're auditors all the time, even without any like external audit auditors, we have to, we need to know where a badge is we need to have visibility on the batch, like every single step, what records. And um, so there's a saying in QA, which is if there's no record, uh, then it means it's not done. So uh, it's important that the record's made, it's yeah. stored, but also like, in, it's also like it, uh, connecting these records together to sort of provide a wholesome view of the batch and a summary of the batch that, that the MES program uh, software, sorry, really helped uh, to provide that visibility. No, that's amazing. So it sounds like QA land can be quite muddy and mystic until you organize all this paper and, oh, yeah. and really and really consolidate it into that clear report. Absolutely, yeah. It, organization is key uh, when it comes to QA, and also uh, you know we have to be efficient as well, right? Uh, we can't mm -hmm. spend. Yeah, we can probably use Google Docs and Sheets, but we can't spend all day trying to integrate that data and trying to get some meaning out of it, really. 
So um, I, yeah, I, I would say this, the software has really helped us just an easy tool for everybody to sort of collaborate at a level and then um, also for us to be compliant with regulations. I have to say, you know, with our last inspection, even uh, our one of our Health Canada inspectors said that they couldn't find any issues with our production batch records. <laughs> and that could only be done because of the tool that, that we're using. Well, no, that's awesome, and obviously the the team using it there is just a bunch of rock stars. So, uh, <laughs> oh, Ben and I, you guys are, are taking care of business. Uh, <laughs> for us, really, you know, it's been an amazing experience working with your team. You know, understanding you know how quality operations and a real drive to focus for quality can um, be augmented by using an MES platform. Um, what's next on the horizon for Tandalus? What are you guys working in the pipeline right now? Oh, uh, a lot of exciting things coming by. And, um, you know, we're obviously growing uh, our products. There are a lot of products coming out and we were getting some, uh, you know, our 2.0 products, especially dry sift tash, all of that is going to be coming into the market soon. And uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I am a big fan of digitalization at every level. So uh, I, you know, I eventually, I want to see, uh, our, our company as, as such and, and then the cannabis industry as a whole uh, using more of digital tools and um, using that to drive their business decisions so more business intelligent tools and um, yeah that I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to that and hopefully Elevated Signals can also implement some of those things. Yeah, well, we're looking forward to that as well, and really, you know, our goal as part of the uh, as part of the community is to help everyone, you know, digitize their their platform, digitize their grows, so they can, you know, understand really what's happening in their own facilities, optimize their QA programs, and uh, you know, really just continue to to grow high quality cannabis and cannabis two point products through that real quality focused lens. So, um, yeah, but I really appreciate um, you taking the time to. Fantastic. Well, thanks uh, again to Venota at Tantalus for taking the time to chat. And I think with that now, what we're going to do now is shift over into a demonstration of Elevated Signals platform. Hey, Lee, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to uh, mention that folks can ask questions. Uh, there is a, a, a chat box. They can post some questions. And, and uh, uh, I'm sure Tiffany and Libby can also... Uh, help uh, vet some of those questions so we can answer them at the end of the, the webinar. Awesome, thanks Ab. Yeah, if everyone looks um, on your Google Meet screen, there's a bunch of triangles and a square and a circle. If you click that, there is a question and answer or a question room where you can uh, ask some of the questions that we'll uh, get to at the end. Perfect, so to kick off our, uh, our brief walkthrough here, um, Elevated Signals is a web-hosted cloud-based application and how producers like Tantalus, uh, Decibel, Prairie Grass are using the software are on, um, are on using the software on tablets and logging this information in real time on the production room floor. So as long as you have an internet connection and a way to go on the internet like Chrome or Firefox, um, you can use the platform. So I'm just gonna sign into our demo account here. And when you log in, the first page that you're gonna see are the locations. And of course, this area is all customizable to a producer's facility. There's just some high level information about what we see here. Um, the shipping receiving room, storage, trim room, nursery, vegetation rooms, flowering, drying and extraction rooms, with some metadata about what's actually happening in those rooms. So we have the, um, App, the ability to integrate with a variety of different environmental sensors and display that data in here. You can also see the number of batches that are in that room, as well as the number of plants in that specific location. On the left hand side, a quick navigation bar to move throughout the facility. You can see the locations, your cultivation batches. In here, you can see an overview of the different batches that you have, the growth stages, as well as the number of plants. The number of plants in your facility your seeds, cultivars, your team can immediately know the outcome of any harvest work orders and understand the plants that you have growing in different growth stages. 
as well we have our processing batches in here so in your production batches area any batches that don't have plant material and now have weight with, associated with them can be monitored in here where you can understand the production site the stage the wet weight and the dry weight uh, as well as where your general work orders will live your production stages as well as substance types our standard destruction module quality control headquarters which we're going to get into in a little bit here hey sorry to interrupt liam um any, any chance that your screen can get bigger um yeah let's how does that look I, i'm sure great thanks perfect um and then into our facility settings in here so this is where we start to define our software um, as a manufacturing software because we're able to track non-cannabis related information that you need to show to health canada and want to know for your own facility management so things like the sensors that you're using in the facility or any of the equipment that you're using in your cannabis manufacturing stages, you can track on all of that information as well as any of the associated work that's being done on that piece of equipment. So if we look at the bucking machine, for example, you can see the different calibration records and sanitization records that were done to those specific pieces of equipment and integrate those equipment into work orders during harvests, trimming, extraction, and so on. So what we're going to do in this demo is just sort of take you through a day in the life of a cultivation and extraction batch at your facility. So I'm just going to click into my cultivation batch in here. You know, we have this batch of purple kush and on the batch page, you can see some high level information. You know, the day that batch was created on the cultivar, its growth stage as well as its location. And on the batch page, a uh, rolling count of the growth stage that it's been in, you know, where it was in propagation and now it's in vegetative. On the batch page, we have what's called an event log. And what the event log provides you is an immediate snapshot into the life cycle history of this batch, starting with, you know, where the batch was created. We can uh, look at any inventory moves, um, like adding plants to the batches, or batch movements throughout the facility, as well as any of the plant advanced growth stages. This inventory log will also have any of the associated quality control records. Again, so those sanitizations, destructions, plant inspections that are located and affected, uh, affected this batch. And really what it allows QA and operations teams to do is understand the true state of where this batch is, because you can get an immediate snapshot into the manufacturing stage of this batch. As well, under the related items on the batch page here, we can see any work orders that are associated with it, the individual plants, the sensors, the records that are associated with this batch, as well as destruction events. So what we'll do is we'll just sort of walk through how um, any of the manufacturing steps you do during this batch are automated in elevated signals. So to start off with this batch, you know, is in vegetative state. Uh, a head grower will come in and look, you know, on his tablet, he's evaluating the batch and say, yeah, it looks like it's time to kick this batch over into flower. So we can make any of the stages here. We're going to change our growth stage into flowering and change the location from veg one into flower one. And we can update the batch. And at any point, you can download a PDF from any of the batches. And what the PDF is going to do is provide you that master batch record that shows all of the inventory movements, additions, destructions, and plant control steps in a single comprehensive report. So here we have our production batch report highlighting you know, when the batch was created, adding any plants. And if you look at the most two recent line items, here we can see that we moved this batch into the flower one location and we updated the batch's growth stage into the flowering stage. Both of these events act as an individual line item on our production batch record. So now that the batch is in the uh, flowering room, there's going to be a variety of different crop and crop operations tasks that your cultivation and QA teams will be doing to these specific batches. And so how producers like prairie grass and uh, one leaf and tantalus are filling out all this information is using the quick records button here. And 
Clicking this button will provide your team with the digital templates that you need for Health Canada compliance. And uh, so things like pest control applications, uh, sanitizations and calibrations as well. But through our work with industry leaders, we've taken some of those best practices and built them into the digital templates for your teams to use. So things like um, calibrations, biocontrol applications, uh, plant scouting forms. So we can come in and use one of these plant scouting forms. And all of these forms are controlled data input forms, meaning that you can select the batches or the locations that are unique to your facility. So I'm gonna choose my batch of purple kush right over here. I can select any of the pests or pathogens that might be found, the physical symptoms, the threat level, if you need a pest control application or a biocontrol application, you can also upload pictures to these forms, as well as say who the task was completed by. As well, the benefit of these forms is that they provide the on the floor real time data capture of any of these events. So you can also add, you know, start time and end time in here if your team is interested in labor tracking, you know, understanding how long it's taking your team to do these specific events. So I'm going to go ahead and submit that record and submitting the record is going to take me to the master record library in the software. And this is the area in your software where all of your records are going to live. It's the central secure location. So this is just our demo account. We only have a few forms in here, but having a digital system provides you the immediate structure, organization and process to your record keeping. So you can filter records by the user, by the type of batch, by the location, the type of record or by start time and end time. And having the digital system saves on your team having to write out an SOP of how you're going to log this information because the software automates that process for you. If I click into the record here, I can download a PDF of this record. And what it's going to show is all of that sidebar information that we had filled out, but in an easy to read PDF. So we have our inspection of plant health observed on the batch. Here's our batch right here, the list of path and path, pest and pathogens, the incidence level, you know, who the task was completed by, as well as the start time and end time. But all of our forms have a digital signature on them, including the day and timestamp of when this information was occurred. And what this allows your team to be is always confident that your records are complete. As we know, you know, Health Canada requires uh, records to be signed off on for them to be complete. And you'd be surprised at the amount of time producers need to chase their colleagues to get these forms signed off on. So all of these digital signatures are automatically provided for your team. If we go back to the record here, um, and again, this is a, a permissions based feature, you can come in and make any edits to the record. So of course, you know, every, um, mistakes happen. Let's just say we forgot to fill out one of the pests that are in here, we can come in and, and make an edit and save the record. And what you'll see on the side here is an edit history. So essentially providing in-app form version control where QA teams and even operation staffs can understand that they're always looking at the most latest record in here and they can understand, you know, who's made any modifications to this record and when. And, you know, if you're using a paper-based system, what this looks like is you have to um, first write out an SOP of how these changes are going to be made and then, you know, scribble out any of the notes, initial sign and date, and you're left with this really messy, illegible form. Having a digital system makes all this information clear and concise. As well, you have the ability to verify records. And what verifying the record will do is provide a um, signature on the record which shows that someone in the QA team has verified that this record was complete as per your facility's SOPs, just to show to Health Canada that you're going through that extra layer of diligence. Finally, if we just go back to our cultivation batches, and I go back to my batch here, and I scroll down to the related items and click records, there's that plant scouting form that we filled out. 
So it's automatically filed against the batch as you fill out that record in real time. As well, if we look on the event log here, we can see that there's a line item that this plant scouting record was just completed. And what I can do as well, just to ensure, is download a PDF of this production batch record. And at the, the most recent line item was that we advanced you know, the batch to the flowering stage. And here's that plant scouting record that we completed as an individual line item in the master batch record. And if I scroll down, our software automatically appends all of the documents and the quality control records for the individual batch. So here's that inspection of plant health record that we just finished up to date with our digital signature on here. So really the MES system allows you to automate this component of your manufacturing process by building the master batch record as it moves throughout the production life cycle history. On a note on our quality control headquarters here, we have our master record library and all of these digital forms in here. Of course, though, you know, we understand that um, a lot of cultivators are, and extractors are growing and producing in their own unique processes. And we want to give you the ability to log that information in your own way. So what we've done is build a custom uh, form builder where your team can modify any of the existing forms that we have in the software or build your own custom ones. If I just go into my plant scouting form here, you'll see that here's our form view in here, which is the same as it is on the side that the staff see. Go to my plant scouting. It's the same view that the staff see on the production room floor. What QA and operations teams can do is if they want to make any modifications, open it up in the form builder. And essentially what this is, is a drag and drop form building tool that gives you the full power of linking these forms to the locations or the batches in your own facility and continue to automate that process. So, you know, you can make any modifications to the existing forms that we have in here. Or if there's a unique form that your facility wants, like a specific calibration form for your extraction equipment or a nutrient application, you can build that form yourself in here. So really, the whole software comes together when your QA and operations teams needs to produce uh, master batch records to show to Health Canada, or if they just really want to understand where the batch is in the manufacturing life cycle. So at any point in, for any batch in any stage of its production history, you can download the production batch record as we've been going through in these examples. And you know, these are just the production batch reports in our demo account. But what I wanted to show you was a production batch report from one of our partnering organizations of really what it looks like in full production. So this information has just been you know, redacted for our partner, but what you can see is this batch is in active production and it's currently already over 100 pages long. And in this report, you can see the day the batch was created. Uh, we added 200 plants to the batch from these mother batches, so providing that genealogical traceability of where the batches are coming from, any of the batch movements, plant advancements, or location changes, as well as all of the associated quality control documents in here. So. Here we have our destruction in here, their pest control applications, sanitizations, and all of these individual line items act as a table of contents for the master batch record, because as we've shown, the software will automatically upload any of these quality control documents for you. So one example of it uploading is our work orders for harvest, where you can track the inputs, the outputs, any of the destroyed material in here, as well as any of the equipment that you're using for this specific tasks, the serial number and who added it. We have our work orders for drying, trimming, and then I'll just scroll down a little bit more, you know, for destruction and into sanitization records, inspections of plant health and so on. And really what this master batch record tool gives you is a diagnostic agent for your quality team to really understand the true state of where the batch is at. 
not only is this batch report useful for um, the facility operations staff, but it's a vital tool for Health Canada during any of your audits. And we've had the privilege of sitting in on multiple successful Health Canada audits and really more of a kudos to our customers for using the software so well. But when we've been in those exit interviews, we've been able to take away some of those key findings and recommendations from Health Canada and build that information into the software. So some of that information in here is the date that any of these events have take, taken place, as well as the calendar week of when those events occurred. And the calendar week is interesting because producer or auditors wanted to know, you know, um, they wanted to see demonstrative proof that producers were doing all of their SOPs um, when they were out or doing all of these tasks in their SOPs when they outlined it. So in here, producers can easily show that they were doing, you know, pest control applications uh, and bio control applications, calendar week 30, calendar week 33, calendar week 35, and so on. So it can really be used to show Health Canada how your team is executing on your SOPs um, as you said you would. So finally, it's a few of the last things that we want to show is in our facility reporting. So all of our reports in here can be used to fill out your facility's CTS and CRA uh, reporting at the end of the month, as well as tracking and just understanding any of the information that's happening really at your facility on a day-to-day -day level. So we've taken a bit of a different approach from your standard operators who provide you know, sort of one-click downloads into CTS. Um, we've provided detailed opening inventories for both cultivation and processing. So producers can really use this information to understand the flow of, of uh, plant material and plants throughout their facility. So to do your CTS, you know, I can download this cultivation report. I can generate a report right in here. And if I go to the monthly inventory, you know, this is a very standard report of what producers see when they download their CTS from um, other seed to sales. It's just, you know, this black box number, producers don't really understand where these number of plants are coming from. And the reason CTS takes so long for a lot of producers is because a lot of their time is spent diagnosing, trying to understand where those plants or production weight has come from. So in the software, you can download the detailed opening inventory reports for that same time period. And what that will show is a detailed batch breakdown that you can open in a CSV and filter. And let's just look at our flowering plants for this month, where you have a clear understanding of the batch name, the growth stage, as well as the number of plants that are actually changed in that monthly opening inventory. So when I sum all of these together, I can see that it's 1566. And then when I go back to my opening inventory, 1566 here, and I can understand that these two numbers are succinct. As well in the software, you have the ability to download your uh, work orders to capture any of this information for CTS. And if we go to our work orders functionality in here, you can export in any of this information, filter it, and let's say you want to look at your packaging work orders, for example. So you can filter that any information, understand you know, when it was opened, when it was closed, um, understand what the inputs are, the outputs, any of the destruction that occurred during that step, as well as the processing loss. So processing loss, a major issue for producers that needed to be tracked separately. In the software, you can integrate all of this information, quickly sum it up, so you can put this information into your monthly CTS or CRA reporting. But most importantly, understand what's happening really on your production room floor when you're looking at these individual packaging runs. Finally, uh, producers have the ability to download all of the information from the types of records that they've filled out in the software. So, you know, if we were to look at the plant scouting record that we just filled out, you can select that information and choose the time period. And exporting that information will give you the individual records, the batches that you fill that information out against, as well as the findings of those particular records. So, you know, any of the pests and pathogens that you've found threat level, as well as start time and end time. So if your team is interested in 
productivity or labor tracking, you'll be able to capture all of that information in here and then analyze it to you know, really understand what's happening at your facility. So with that, that's everything that you know, we wanted to, to walk through today, a, a quick high level overview of the software. Um, really thank everyone for joining and I'm going to uh, yeah, open the floor up to any questions that people on the line uh, might have. Yeah, I noticed that uh, Amar is uh, answering a lot of the uh, the questions that, that are out there. But um, if anyone has not been able to look over the chat, um, there are some some questions that have been uh, asked and answered there. Um, are are people able to open their mics, or are they more uh, just to type out questions? No, people should be able to open up their mics. Anyone want to jump in with a question? Did you want to say anything about the CRA form or, or was that already covered? Yeah, so in the in the B300 form, how that all of that information can be diagnosed in here in our and pulled from our monthly cultivation, processing and quality reports okay. in the correction. All right. Uh, I know that there were some questions around EU GMP. Is there anything you can comment on that? Yeah, great question. So that's a process that, that we're currently going through right now. Um, GMP validation has always been a key focus of our software design and a principal component in our development roadmap. Um, so we're actively going through that certification process right now um, based on a lot of the needs of our clients who want to export to, uh, to Europe. So our software will be will be GMP compliant. Okay. So Christian has a question. Yes. Uh, you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, we're uh, actually um, managing our waste with, you know, we have a scale that is dedicated. So today we are managing our waste lug uh, with papers and pen. Uh, will it be possible, for example, to link our waste scale directly to the system so we can import directly the readings? So, you know, uh, taking out the human factor in that. Yeah, great qu question, Christian. Um, so the digital scale integration is currently on our um, development roadmap. Um, right now, producers are just recording that information in our destruction module in here by hand. Um, the reason that it's just been on our roadmap is that we've heard a lot of uh, issues with the integrations not reading correctly. So forcing producers need to, add, need to actually use separate uh, pen and paper spreadsheets to capture that information. Um, so right now it's done uh, manually, but on our roadmap for, for next year. Thanks. Any other questions? Liam, there are a couple of questions in the comments that you might want to address. Perfect. Um, I just saw one come in from, I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, Milagros. Uh, can you modify your forms and work orders? Do the SOPs upload or can it be built in? Regarding digital forms, how do you search for a document to sign? Yeah, great question. So, all of the forms can be modified in the quality control records here under the form builder. So this is where in the software you can modify the existing digital templates that we provide. If there are some differences in, let's say, you know, your um, sanitation activities that you want to change, you'd be able to do that in the form builder here. As well as this is the area if you wanted to build your own custom forms, you can do that information in here. Um, in terms of searching for forms that need to be signed, how you would do that is verified or unverified in here. Um, so depending on if the form is verified, you can filter those ones out and then show only the unverified forms for the QA managers that they need to sign. There's also a question, uh, Liam, from Denise on CTLS. 
Denise, does it really transfer automatically? So it's CDS. So Denise, we, um, in our CTS, there's no API currently to connect one uh, software into Health Canada portals. There's always going to be that intermediary step of uploading or downloading that information in a CSV and then submitting it to Health Canada. The major issue that we've heard from producers who have come from other softwares and onto our platform is that those monthly in opening inventories look like this. So when they go to submit this information to Health Canada, this, these numbers are often incorrect. And the reason it takes so long is because producers need to really diagnose where this information is coming from. So the reason we provided these detailed reports is so producers can manually add in the number of cuttings, but they now have these detailed reports to understand where that number is coming from um, in their facility. And they use it also as the ability to really spot check any of the inventory that they have on hand. Um, the same issue goes for CRA reporting as well. If there's an error in the number of seeds that you are reporting, uh, very difficult to understand, you know, especially when you get into the hundreds of thousands of seeds where those calculations can be coming from. So that's why based on the uh, requests of our, our, our producers, we provided these detailed breakdowns to show individually that number that can be then quickly summarized and then added into the CTS for you to submit. Any other questions? Did you want hey, to make um, Hey, Liam, it's oh. Jonathan here from Green Amber. Sure. Go ahead, Jonathan. Hey, Ab, how's it going too? Hey guys, I, I really like what you guys have, have done with the software, uh, what you guys and Amar have done here. It's uh, from when, when I first saw this stuff a few years back, it's, it's greatly changed. It's gotten to the system where I think it is definitely helpful for reporting it as a former compliance officer myself. I see this as a, as a great tool moving forward. Um, I know we've talked about this in the past before, Liam, but I'm, I'm, I'm gonna bring it up again. With your with your diagnostic tools and your auditing tools that you guys have here built in, do you guys have the ability um, to cross-reference data from different platforms? So I know some of the people have mentioned in the comments before, you know, about using like a, a reliable system controller for like say for environmental controls and building. Do you guys now have the ability to cross-reference that data now with some of the batch record information so we can have like visual representation so we can pr probably look at, at trends and other types of correlations we want to make during diagnostics? Great question, Jonathan. And yeah, thanks so much for, for the kind words. Um, so yeah, there is the ability, I'll talk about the environmental monitoring a little bit first and then the, the analytics second. So. Um, our whole software is built on an open API, so we can ingest uh, a variety of different data sources that producers would be using. We didn't go too much in the demo here, but we do work with one third-party sensor company called Monit, M-O-N-N-I-T. Uh, they're a heart, or they're an industrial strength research calibrated sensor out of the States and we've been deploying them at producers' facilities uh, to monitor temperature, humidity, CO2, and light detection. And really what it provides is a um, granular view into the environmental characteristics of a specific room. And what that allows the, uh, the software to do is cross-link all of the batches that are in those specific rooms and link that environmental data um, to these specific batches as they experience them. So we've done uh, we've done this for indoor. Uh, in terms of outdoor, we also work with a um, outdoor environmental sensor company called Arable. Um, super cool sensor that monitors you know temperature and humidity, but then also like NDVI, um, soil temperature, soil moisture, and really the same benefits you know to um, link that environmental batch data. Um, to the specific batches that they were grown. So really producers can understand, you know, the specific conditions that batches were experiencing at those growth stages. And then as they progress, you know, from veg to flower um, and then into harvesting and drying, that they can continue to correlate that information, really understand what works well for the batch and export that information to uh, repeat it and ultimately scale it across their different batches. Um, in terms of, you know, looking at the analytics, 
Um, a lot of the, all of this information can be again exported into a CSV um, from our API, and we've seen producers do a lot of super cool uh, data analytics, whether that's importing some of that information into Excel um, or into things like Power BI and some of the applications that you know they're looking to understand is really their own production pipeline, understanding their cloning rates as they move throughout. Um, you know, the cloning process and into veg. They want to see how their weights are transferring from harvest into drying, into trimming, so they can understand their own efficiencies. And the beauty of it is that it's all their own data. So information that they've recorded in elevated signals and then exported into their, into their own software. Um, so really excited that they're, you know, really finding that value in gathering all of this information and, and sharing it amongst their team. I see we have a few more questions regarding uh, cost uh, and also if this is a, a mobile um, software, something you put on your phone. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, for mobile, we're working on that UI right now. It definitely works on your phone and not on the greatest form factor. Um, producers are really using it on tablets like an iPad or a Samsung Galaxy right now, sort of like a digital clipboard. Um, but we do have a mobile designer on staff who's working on that currently. Um, as well as cost, you know, cost, um, we do have specific pricing for micro cultivators and microprocessors, and then appropriate competitive pricing for standard producers. Um, and if you want to learn more, please feel free to reach out um, and we can, we can discuss a little bit more. Um, I'm going to just put a slide up in here just has my contact information. Give me one sec. And, and just to um, mention to, to everyone who's listening in, um, the folks at uh, Elevated Signals are recording this and I assume everyone will receive a, a copy of the recording. And, uh, and of course, um, they would love to schedule a demo to go deeper into uh, discussions around uh, you know, a potential uh, uh, partnership. So I encourage to follow up with Liam. Um, any other sort of last minute questions before I turn it back to Liam and Libby? Great. Perfect, maybe just with the last few minutes, just uh, you know, sharing a little bit more about our onboarding and training process. Uh, let me just pull up my screen here. So, you know, part of um, our onboarding and training is taking your team um, through uh, training using the software. Um, really what we like to do is understand your facility's unique production workflows from cultivation harvesting all the way up to extraction and processing because what we want to do is tailor our training and demo and really the, the entire experience to how you're going to be using it, using it at the facility and sharing more about you know, where in the points in your production process you'll be recording and documenting all of your required information uh, for Health Canada and just also for your facility. So our training session, of course, is recorded. We have supplementary training and onboarding material to share with you following that session. As well, what we like to do is bi-weekly check-ins with your team and your staff to make sure that you know, you're using the software correctly. Any blockers that you might be experiencing, we can help you quickly resolve them. Um, and then just also that you're documenting all of your information correctly for CTS and CRA at the end of the month. Because you know, we want to make sure that your team is happy confident using the software and uh, really getting the most value out of it. So something that we take, of course, very seriously and would love to, to chat more with everyone here about that and, and field any other questions. Um, so with that, we're just coming up to the, uh, the top of the hour here. Um, any of the questions that we didn't get to in our chat will definitely follow up with your team. I uh, really like to thank Av um, for co-hosting this webinar with us and for everyone who was on the call um, you know, early morning in the, in the West Coast and towards the later afternoon in the East. And uh, yeah, we really appreciate your time. Uh, please don't hesitate to reach out with any questions or comments you might have. And uh, yeah, looking forward to being in touch with everyone on here.
Thanks, Liam. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.